What is going on, y'all? Robert Sykes, KetoSavage.com, and I'm coming at you with another series. So I kind of like how I've been doing these series formats. I feel like it gives me relevant weekly content to provide for y'all, and then it just kind of takes y'all step by step through the entire process in its entirety, which I think is good. So we did the competition prep for 2023, got down to 3.9% body fat, got my pro card, feel really good about all that. I walked y'all through the reverse diet and how to get back to a healthy baseline hormonally, metabolically, uh, calorically, all that good stuff. So now it only seems fitting to have a series on muscle building with keto. So welcome to the Keto Bulk Episode 1 series. This is going to be more of an emphasis towards uh, just building as much strength and lean tissue as possible for the remainder of my building phase, which will... I don't know, it's kind of a variable time length as far as when I'm going to actually compete again, but it probably will not be before three years from now. Um, I alluded this to this in a prior video, but previously, the WNBF Federation, which I am now pro in, uh, mandated that all pro competitors compete every single, every two years in order to maintain pro status. And that never really sat well with me or many other natural competitors because it takes so much time to build lean tissue and more muscle as a natural competitor, and if you're spending, you know, six months in a deficit, three or four months reverse dieting after that, like, there's a whole year right there. So you pretty much take one of those two years, and that's all prep. You're in a deficit. You're not really building that much muscle. And then you have very little time to actually build muscle before transitioning into another prep. So I've never really liked that approach. However, the WNBF Federation just unveiled their new protocol or their new guidelines in which they now allow pro competitors to maintain pro status as long as they keep up on their annual membership dues, which is great because now I can have longer time between shows, between competing, just simply pay my annual membership dues and then compete when I'm ready and bring a better package to the stage, which is exactly what I plan to do, which is why I'm probably going to take between three and five years in a building phase before I compete again. Um, now, as a seasoned athlete, someone that's been training for 10 plus years, it is hard to build lean tissue. Like my first competition saw me at 151 pounds on stage. I actually got down to 151 this last prep. I've got much more muscle now than I did in that first competition in 2012. Uh, I got much leaner this go round, but I want to compete at a heavier weight. Um, I am typically the leanest guy on stage, but I'm also the lightest guy in my weight category. I would love to be on the heavier end of that middleweight category, lightweight category, depending on what I'm doing. Um, but I'd like to be on the heavier end of my weight category and be competitive in that regard. I feel like if I can bring the same level of conditioning that I did to this last competition season to the next shows, but do so carrying more muscle on my frame, I'll be pretty untouchable because I have it from a conditioning standpoint. I have the shape, I have the symmetry, I have the proportion. I just need more size. That was the unanimous judging feedback that I got from every single show. Just simply bring more size to the stage, which is what I'm planning on doing. So, hence the muscle building series that I'm now starting on. Um, with regards to what my plans are, so I just took some pictures uh, this morning prior to recording this video. Uh, Chip, my amazing media guy, will throw some of those clips in right now. You can kind of see my conditioning currently. Again, I got a DEXA scan uh, two weeks ago now. That had me at 13.1% body fat. I'm 192 pounds in these pictures. The in body has me at 17, 17.5% body fat. I'll get an updated caliper test, uh, but I'm probably somewhere around, you know, somewhere between 13 and 15% body fat realistically, um, which is pretty much the composition that I want to maintain throughout the majority of my building phase. I do not want to dip into a significant deficit at any point throughout this building phase because that would defeat the purpose of building more muscle. That said, there is benefit to modulating caloric intake and having periods of higher and lower calories. I've gone through building phases in the past where I would just do like a, you know, quote unquote, dirty bulk and put on unnecessary body fat. My first show, I bulked up to 230 and then cut down to 150 and 12 weeks, which was just not good at all. I lost a ton of muscle in the process. I want to stay within, you know, 25, 35 pounds of my stage weight, uh, but I do want to maximize my muscle building potential, which is going to require a slightly higher body fat than obviously competition levels of conditioning. And there is benefit to having that caloric, you know, increase when the primary goal is to add more tissue. So, a little bit more body fat's going to come with that, but that is a worthwhile price to pay to bring more mass to the stage the next time I compete. So, 
throughout this series, I'm going to be taking more of an emphasis uh, towards the actual training. Um, I'm going to show you all more training footage. I'm going to be documenting my lifting metrics and you'll be able to kind of see what my current strength stats are. And if I'm continually seeing those increase via progressive overload principles and I am pushing more weight, then it can be argued that I've got more lean tissue. And then obviously I'll be doing DEXA scans and body fat compositions throughout that as well, as well as the, the weekly progress picture updates. So all of that will stay relatively consistent with what you were seeing with the other two series. Uh, but this is just going to be more of an emphasis on building more strength, building more muscle, building more shape, specifically in my chest. I want my chest to become more developed as that has always been one of my lagging body parts. Uh, so I'm going to change how I train chest slightly. Um, I was thinking about switching up my training split altogether. I've been doing a full body split for the last year and a half or so. Uh, so I was going to go to a specific body part split, possibly following my eight day heavy hypertrophy protocol. But after I got to look into some of the DEXA data from this last scam, uh, I started last prep at 182 pounds, 67,000 grams of lean tissue, and then got really lean, reversed added up to uh, 192 pounds. So I'm basically 10 pounds heavier now than I was at the start of my last prep and about almost 73,000 grams, uh, a difference of 4,220 grams of lean tissue, which equates to about 9.3 pounds. So does that mean I've built 9.3 pounds of, you know, pure skeletal muscle tissue throughout the last year while in a deficit, the majority of that? No, certainly doesn't mean that, but it does mean that in me following a full body split, I certainly didn't lose any lean tissue and I've actually gained quite a bit. So I'm kind of curious to try to maintain this full body program and training protocol throughout at least the first part of this building phase while in the context of a significant caloric, significant caloric surplus to see if I can really maximize that muscle building potential. I think as a natural bodybuilder, having a higher training frequency for a given body part does have its benefits. So I think that is one of the primary perks of this full body routine because I'm training each body part every single time I train. What I'm going to do differently with chest is rather than just having one exercise dedicated to chest development, I'm probably going to have two exercises with each full body training session every single day. So I'm going to get basically double the volume, double the workload, double the intensity on chest relative to my other body parts, because that is my primary lagging body part. Now, since I'm not cutting weight right now, since I'm not losing uh, body fat as the primary goal, I'm not going to be documenting all of this in my spreadsheet that y'all saw throughout my prep and reverse diet, but I am logging my food with chronometer. So here I am logged into my chronometer dashboard. I just kind of want to show you some of the metrics that I'll be sharing with you on a weekly basis. Uh, specifically, we have our calories consumed here, so energy consumed, and you can kind of see I've got some high days here. Um, I've got... Uh, basically, this is just a, a graph of my energy over the last three months. Um, I've been averaging around 5,000 calories here lately, uh, which is a pretty significant increase in food from what I was consuming at baseline at the start of the prep last year, which is around 3,000 calories. So I am certainly in a surplus right now, uh, which is priming my body for adding more tissue, both fat and muscle. Uh, here's a weight trend. Um, again, I was not using chronometer throughout my entire prep, so this does not have all of that data, but I've been using this throughout the latter half of my reverse diet and, you know, to current date here. Uh, so you can see my weight is pretty much leveling off right around 192. I've been 192 for the past several days now. So that's kind of where my body is wanting to stay uh, from a homeostatic set point at this, you know, 5,000 calorie daily average. What I plan on doing from a calorie modulation standpoint like I said, there are benefits to doing that. I do not want to go into a deficit per se, uh, you know, below a healthy baseline. But I do think there will be benefit from, you know, going from, you know, right now I said I'm 192 pounds. I would like to stay between 180 and 195 probably throughout this entirety of this building phase. 180 to 195, so a 15 pound window. As I get up on the higher end of that, like I am now, 192. I may cut my calories gradually to 4,000 calories on average and then see that weight drop a little bit. And then once I hit 180, I'll build that calorie intake back up until I'm around 192, 195 again. I think simply cycling from 192, 195, back down to 180 and then back up and then keeping my calories between 
4,000, probably 5,500. I think there is benefit to that. It doesn't overload my digestive tract. It doesn't give me just this overwhelming surplus at all times. And I think, like I said, there's, there's benefit to modulating between those higher and lower intakes. But I do not anticipate myself dropping below 4,000 calories, which is still a pretty healthy intake of food. Uh, so as long as I keep it between 4,000 and 5,500 calories on average and cycle my weight between 180 and 195, all the while having an emphasis towards progressive overload training and just building as much lean tissue and strength as possible, that is my primary objective for the foreseeable future with this building protocol. Um, I will keep you up to date on any compositional changes, any caloric changes. Uh, I may throw some strategic extended fasts in intermittently throughout the building phase. I do think there's a benefit to that. I never recommend extended fasting in the context of a deficit because it's just too many stressors on the body. Uh, but every once in a while when I'm in a pretty aggressive surplus, I will throw an occasional three-day fast in or something of that nature to have you know, a, a break from a digestive standpoint uh, to have all the benefits that come with strategic fasting. But again, I only do that in the context of a pretty aggressive caloric surplus. So I may throw some of those in here. But for all intents and purposes, the primary objective for the next foreseeable future several years is just to build as much muscle strength and uh, improve my metabolic and caloric threshold and hormonal baseline as much as I can prior to transitioning into another prep at some point in the future. So I'll be documenting all this for y'all, sharing everything with you. As far as food goes this week, um, I'm probably going to keep things relatively simple. Lots of ground beef, lots of eggs, lots of keto bricks, and that will likely be the base of my nutrition this week, but I will keep you up to date on all of that as well going forward. So thank you all so much for tuning in. We will tackle this building phase together and hopefully dispel any of the rumors that you cannot build muscle on a ketogenic diet. I've hopefully illustrated that's certainly not the case previously, but I want to get it dialed in and optimized so that you can see that you can optimally build muscle with a ketogenic approach in the complete absence of dietary carbohydrates. So thank you all for tuning in, and we will see you next week for week two of this building phase.